Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Unit 5, Activity 5. And uh, before we actually jump into that, there's a couple of things that I kind of want to show you to sort of lean into that. Um, we're not just going to jump straight into the activity today. There's a couple of other things that I want to look at and talk about so that we have a good um, kind of tone set before we start. So let's go ahead and just talk about something. So up until this point, what I have kind of tried to beat into you is that the objective of the battery, the, the way we build our batteries, is so that they hold the pressure difference across the battery constant. So it's a source of a constant pressure difference. And for the most part, that is true. Um, that's pretty much true with a, with a fresh battery. But um, our batteries are not perfect, um, which is why they die as they age. And so the activity that we're going to do today is sort of going to start to lean into why batteries die. Um, and so the question is, does a battery really maintain a constant pressure difference? Um, and... Yeah, I'm just going to show it to you real quick. So we have here, I have here a quick little circuit with a battery connected to a long bulb. Okay, and then I've got this capacitor here. Now, first question is, why does the capacitor stop charging? So when I set it here, um, you're gonna see it's gonna charge really fast. You see that bulb, it went out for a second and then it brightened right back up. That means that this capacitor was charging while that was dim. Um, and I have it set up with just wires, so the resistance of it is very low, which is why it charged so fast. It stops charging because the pressure difference across this capacitor is the same as the pressure difference across the battery. Now, if that's the case and all else is equal, okay, these two circuits, they are the same. If all that is true, then when I connect this here, we should see these two bulbs as the same brightness. So let's look at it really closely. Okay, now it does dim but let's go ahead and look at it again real quick. Okay, let's look at it again. Watch it, watch that initial brightness. It should be the same. And it might be hard to tell in the video, but I can kind of tell on my own, okay, that if I do this, the initial brightness of the bulb on the left connected to the capacitor is actually a little bit brighter. And since everything else in the circuit is the same, that means that there must be something else in the circuit with the battery that is providing some extra resistance to make the flow rate on that side less. And the only other thing in that circuit is the battery itself. So the conclusion that I'm getting at there is that the battery itself must have some resistance because otherwise those two bulbs would stay the same brightness. Now one of the reasons that we haven't really noticed those effects, um, and we actually have started to notice them in the last couple of weeks um, before spring break, is because we were using new batteries. And as our batteries have aged, they have gotten to be not as good at their job. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and migrate over to my kitchen where I have another circuit set up. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna look at here then is Castle Unit 5, Activity 5. And the focus question on it is what is the effect of decreasing the resistance on the right side of the circuit? Um, so we have circuits A, B, C, and I'm actually gonna do another one. 
where we have on this side, we've got just a long bulb and then a round bulb, which has less resistance than a long bulb. And then two round bulbs, which has even less resistance than that. And so what we're going to look at is how does that change the flow rate through the battery? And I've got a compass set up and also the brightness of the bulb on the left. The idea being that if this battery here, okay, this battery here, this battery here, if it maintains a constant red to blue pressure difference, then the brightness of this bulb, that long bulb on the left side, should not change. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and make your predictions. I'll go ahead and I'll connect this circuit real quick. Um, I need to set it down. Okay. Okay, so we see here that, um, well, I'm having a little bit of difficulty keeping my wire straight here. Um, but let's just use that as our baseline. As there's charge flowing through there, it's a small amount of charge flowing. As we've seen with just a single long bulb, it does not have very much uh, charge flow. Okay, so this is going to be our baseline. We're saying that before we add the branch, um, our flow rate or our compass deflection is pretty low, um, and the brightness of the left bulb is, well, it's bright. When I add this long bulb here, is it going to get dimmer? That, that bulb there, is it going to get dimmer? Is it going to get brighter, or should it stay the same? Go ahead and make that prediction, and then do the same thing for circuits B and C for adding the two things that have even less resistance on that other side. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging things in. Okay, let's start with adding a single long bulb in parallel on the other side. Okay, watch what happens to that long bulb there. We see its brightness did not really shift that much, if at all. Okay, you do see the screen brighten a little bit from the other bulb. The brightness doesn't shift, but if we look down here, we see that the flow rate through the battery does get a little bit higher. Okay, so adding that there, the flow rate through the battery does get a little higher. That compass does move a little bit more. Now I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this bulb and shift into circuit B. So, again, what, what we're seeing is that that didn't really change anything, but the flow rate did increase through the battery. But that didn't really have very much, if any, effect on the brightness of the bulb on the left. Now, when I add this round bulb in series, which has even less resistance, that one you definitely can see. The brightness shifting a little bit and you can see the compass is rotating quite a bit more okay i'll let you decide how many degrees that is but to me it looks like it settles down at about 15 or 20 degrees i'm going to clip this one on now okay so we have that whole thing set up we did see that bulb get a little bit less bright. Now I'm going to move to circuit C, and I'm going to add a second round bulb in, in parallel. That means that the resistance on the right side is going to get even less than it was before. Okay, let's watch it. Again, it doesn't dim a lot. It mostly stays the same brightness, but it does get a little bit dimmer. Okay, and now we have our compass settling at more like 25 degrees, which means that there is even more charge flow through the battery now. 
Finally, I'm going to just add a third bulb. And I could theoretically keep doing this, but I ran out of wires. Okay, I'm gonna just add that third bulb and we'll see that brightness does go down a bit more again, right? And it's still lit, but if the brightness is going down, then that means that the charge flow in here must be less and that the pressure difference from this point to this point must again be less. Um, now I'm gonna get into this a little bit more with the notes in a minute, but if the pressure difference from here to here just across the battery is changing, the only thing inside this in between right here and right here is the battery. So the only thing that can take up that pressure difference is the battery itself, which means that this battery must have a small amount of internal resistance. And as it gets older and older, that internal resistance must be increasing. All right. Um, I'm going to publish also a second video for this, um, just like I did for the activity the other day. So I'll publish another video that you will also watch that has me just going through some notes, the conclusion and the consensus, and highlighting some of the observations from this activity. I guess I'll see you again in a couple of minutes for you, but for me, I'll still never see you. Okay, bye.